everyone, how you doing? Welcome to my very, very first episode of Point and Click Puzzle Games. Now, if you haven't come across me before, my name is Angela McCall. I actually run McCall Media TV, which is a different YouTube channel. But there's been this little niggling feeling inside me for absolute ages that I've wanted to launch this channel. And I don't know why I was waiting. So basically, this is the first episode to give you a little bit of a background as to why this channel exists. So without further ado, I'm going to play my B-roll and we'll crack on. Okay, so I am basically going to give you a quick insight as to why I've created this channel, what gives me the authority to teach you guys how to code, some of the tools, the software, and basically the, the kind of the concept and how it came to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is just very quickly touch on my coding background. Now, I started tinkering with website design back in the late 1990s. There, you know, it wasn't a thing that was common at the time. People were still using modems to connect to the internet. And kids, if you're watching this, you have no clue what I'm talking about, but go ask your parents. Um, and essentially, uh, life was about this, you know, fabulous tool called a website. And as a business, if you didn't have a website, you know, it just wasn't wasn't good. So I basically sort of took it upon myself, shall we say, to tinker with website design and development. And I literally booked myself onto some home study courses with uh, Microsoft and literally absorbed this information. And I started to learn HTML, how to do CSS styling, how to do JavaScript, how to code MySQL databases, how to connect them with PHP, all of this stuff, everything that a website used 25, 20 years ago to basically get on the internet and to function. And this was great. And then eventually I took myself off to uni and in between semesters, I started traveling and I'd be working working for clients back home custom building essentially uh, scripts that would have these like include files that I would basically draw into the website so the website could see if it was going on Internet Explorer or Firefox or wherever it was being looked at and uh, long before even like mobile apps and things like this came along Facebook launched the year after I finished uni. So it kind of gives you the idea that at the time that I was doing this coding, literally websites was the only thing that was really happening on the internet. So this was fine and dandy, but then as you can imagine, things like social media came along, which meant people needed to embrace the digital marketing side of things, social media marketing and all that kind of stuff. And WordPress and other sort of point and click, do it yourself website solution started to materialize, which meant anybody with a slight little bit of ethos or brain cells or charisma with confidence of using a computer could suddenly start to point and click and design some of these websites and basic brochure style sites and things for themselves. So over the course of about say 10, 12 years ago, my coding skills in the way that I was using them started to sort of evaporate, that their need was drying up. And I as a business was also starting to pivot and migrate a little bit more over to the whole digital marketing side of things and my passion was for building sales funnels and using my tech skills and background knowledge to sort of connect with APIs all of these different service providers so that you could have these automated sales funnels so my coding skills shall we say started to become really rusty and kind of just sort of never got used and this was fine and dandy except the fact that I had this kind of niggling feeling you know it took me that long to train and upskill that I didn't want to lose that ability so I then started to have this concept bearing in mind that my girls at the moment of filming this in August 2020 are currently 10 and 7 years old that I wanted to have some sort of channel that taught kids to code now this basically was a so that I could keep my hand in and not lose those skills that it's taken me a good decade to have accumulated um, and that are actually going quite rusty but also due to the fact that when I was at uni I did a couple of little part-time sort of homework study courses, uh, not courses, um, jobs, whereby charities would pay me to run an after school club for local secondary schools. And there were some bright sparks in there from about the age of 11 to 16 age group. And I used to teach them very basic HTML and I actually really loved it. 
So much so that when I finished uni, I actually considered becoming a school teacher and dabbled in that for about 18 months doing some training and this, that and the other, then realised that actually, no, I like my skill, I like my tech, but my, my private web like clients and things are starting to take off and I still had this passion for traveling so it was actually a path that we shall say that I am glad that I explored but I didn't pursue anyway that aside so I've touched a little bit on teaching I've touched a little bit on dealing with kids between the age of 11 and 16 and I know they're really really bright sparks and my eldest is on the cusp of turning 11 and my nephew is 11 in literally a few weeks time so they're just starting to come up into that environment and I thought you know what me sitting down trying to teach my girls how to code we, we would all kill each other we would you know it, it's just not going to happen but my eldest is very good at literally diving onto YouTube, finding a video that solves a problem that she's got, learning how to do something and then just taking herself off and doing it. So in the last few months during lockdown, she's literally taught herself how to do video editing, how to design thumbnails. She's literally 10 years old and I haven't shown her given that this is my industry. It's also her dad's industry, my partner, David. He doesn't live with us, but he basically, we met at uni doing this stuff. Um, neither of us has taught her and she's literally, because she's absorbed this environment from us has literally just you know taken it upon herself and I thought actually if she can do that then the chances are she might stumble across my videos and teach herself how to code as well and I think all kids should learn at some point not because they want to be coders or programmers or software developers but because of the logical and sort of uh, process that it makes you go through with regards to problem solving, uh, accuracy, attention to detail, and just, you know, understanding how things work, because we do live in a digital age. So that basically put, explains my journey as to kind of why this channel exists. But what to actually code well when i was a kid um i used to go when i was about 10 or 11 like my kids age now i used to go and buy and i've got hundreds of them literally hundreds and hundreds of these little osborne puzzle books and they were fabulous because what would happen is every double page spread pretty much would have um, this like kind of don't go and don't don't proceed until you fix the puzzle. And there would be maps, there would be clues, there would be codes that you had to break. Um, look, you know, the Invisible Spy, Mystery or Main Street, Agent Arthur's Arctic Adventures. You know, if you haven't seen or come across these, I mean, look at them, they're, they're like really discolored and old because I've just done so, played with them so much, but there'd be maps and all sorts. But the, the big, takeaway from this is that they were like they got me thinking they had me problem solving they had me exploring mysteries and hunting for clues think Indiana Jones it was that kind of era I grew up with the Sega I was gonna say Sega Mega Drive actually I had the original Sega console before I got the Mega Drive but I grew up with 2D uh, games, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog, Mario, those kind of platform games. I can remember there was a really good one with a rabbit. I can't remember what it's called, Bugsy or something. And then there was um, the Tasmanian Des Devil one. I can't remember what he's called now. But I, I grew up with those kind of platform games where you'd have this image at the background and then this little platform and you jump and you had to solve clues. And, and I love it. Absolutely love it. You could probably tell from my passion right now. So how does that all correlate and relate to what we are talking about today on this channel and why this channel exists? Well, literally, uh, around about five years ago at Christmas time, my girls and I uh, at that time would have been five and three years old. And we were like, they had Kindles, uh, mainly because I never got to use my iPad. And we was, you know, tinkering with some games that we could download at Christmas. It was miserable weather outside. And we came across this game which was called Alice it, Alice Trapped in Wonderland and it was basically a bit like you know like the whole down the rabbit hole kind of thing but the story was these images with hot spots that you could click on and there was objects that you had to pick up and that would go in your backpack and you'd have these little clues and you'd have to search and every every image was a different story like a different double page spread of one of these books so essentially they had taken or I don't know if they had taken but it was in my eyes and my opinion these books reincarnated into an app environment as a game and I loved it and from having found that I then went and found all these other 
game designers, I say all these other, there's about four or five mainstream ones that I've come across. And I've kind of made friends with a couple of them that are like small one man band businesses, a bit like myself. And there's a couple that are mainstream agencies with a team of people putting these games together. And um, I kind of downloaded, I've got loads and loads of them on my, on my phone, which I will have to show you and I'll do some reviews on. But I would literally download and play the latest version. And that was, that's fine. So that was fueling my need. And all the time in my background of my head, I'm going, oh, this would be so easy to make as a game. But how, how? I, I knew nothing about mobile app game development. And then uh, I can't remember if it was two or three Christmases ago now. So we're talking about uh, two, two and a half years maybe ago. Um, but literally, I think it was two days before Christmas, um, a chap who runs Fire Maple Games, which is an American company, I'm sure if I remember rightly, having spoken to him a long time ago, he lived in Philadelphia. He launched a game called Thickety Creek. And I was just like, yes, I've got to download, load. you know, it's been a few months, I've, I've got no games to play. So we downloaded it, obviously, over Christmas, things settled down once the kids have got a bit quieter with all like the Christmas presents. And I started playing this game. And I'm just like, I loved it, absolutely loved it. Um, and um, I think I dived back on the Facebook page that I I've been following him on and I just was reading some of the posts and a couple of people going oh you know there's a little bit of a bug here and he, he was like apologizing and then also talking about how it was released on Android or it's coming out on Android in a few weeks and he'd just done the iOS version and that kind of stuff and then somewhere in this conversation somebody asked him how did you design this app why this thought never occurred to me I have absolutely no idea but he basically turned around and went oh it's Lua Lua programming language and it is desi designed in the Corona SDK uh, game platform engine. And I was just like, Ta -da -da! this is the answer. This is the answer I've been looking for. So within um, about 48 hours, between that low, between Christmas and New Year, I basically went and found out all about uh, this uh, corona. Now, I'm filming this in August 2020. If you're watching this in the future, then you'll know at this time of year, we'd have just gone through as a, a globe around four or five months of hell, shall we say, with this whole coronavirus. So this is just a really unfortunate co uh, coincidence in name. But anyway, nothing related to the coronavirus. And ironically, at the time I'm talking to you about this, literally two months ago, this company has actually pivoted and changed all of their names. And I'm going to come on to that in just a couple of minutes. But I essentially found this website, started reading all about it, started downloading all of the software. And again, I've got tutorials coming up in the next few episodes. It's going to teach you how to do all of this. But I then started playing with all of their, the tutorials. And I'm like, well, I know how to code. I know how to program. I just didn't know this particular language. And I hit the ground running with it really easily because it is a linear style language, which again, I am going to explain in full detail in the future. But that is literally how I started tinkering with mobile app design. So first thing that I did, guess what type of game I wanted to start designing? Uh, yeah, nothing small, nothing sort of slow to break myself into it. I had to literally jump straight into uh, basically building my little point and click game. So this is where I'm at at the moment. Now, I haven't touched this since about February 2020 purely because um, we've been going into the, obviously the coronavirus lockdown and I wanted to launch my digital marketing business once more and get myself back up and running because I've had a couple of years out due to family and personal reasons. But I basically wanted to design my own point and click game. So you have to excuse the fact that this is quite crude still at the moment because a lot of it is just placeholders to get things up and running. Um, but this is kind of where I'm at. So it kind of introduces you to a story you know you're an agent the whole perspective or point of view of the story is that you're sitting around you're bored you've got no missions to go on and then suddenly you get this email message and this agent wants you or this professor has you know wants you to go and help find this emerald type thing and uh, he, you know there's always got to be a villain in these type of games and away you go so you know you go into the game this is all of my coding at the moment all done with all the free tools I'm going to talk to you about in a minute but you you basically got different areas of the screen that you can click on you take a photo there's a clue there for a totem pole and away you go and as you can see this is me literally coding a 2d point and click game so if you've not played anything like this before um these red spots obviously won't exist when I publish the game, but this is my visual clue to myself while I'm still developing as to where I can click on screen. 
and obviously I haven't placed objects because that one's floating in the middle of a tree, but you go around and you basically click on different parts of the screen and you can collect different items. She says uh, it's not working at the moment whilst I'm live. There we go. And you can click on different things. You come across treasure chests, but you can't open it because you don't have a key. So you have to go and find a key somewhere. And, uh, and that's kind of it. And as you collect objects and clues, you can't pick this up because the stone's too heavy to lift. So it means you need to go and find something to lift the stone with there's all these types of clues and things that you can do and um there's games and puzzles and all sorts so there's the key and then you've got to fix it and so forth so before i go into it and show you give you my whole game away you get the kind of concept so i've started coding this and it's all done with um the corona stroke what is now solar 2d and open source and free tools so let me just bring myself back up on screen because now that you've kind of got an idea of what uh, essentially um, could be possible with a sort of 2D point and click game and an adventure game and solving puzzles and clicking on this and clicking on that. Just basically a version of these books uh, or the concept of these books in an in an app and i'm not the first to have done it which is great because i haven't stolen an idea um but essentially this is this is where this whole entire um channel has come from so uh everything that i use is open source so corona which is now called solar 2d by the way um and i'm going to go and do a full tutorial so that you know how to download it install it and the plugins and all the other bits and pieces that you need but essentially um, let me just bring it back up on the screen because so, I'm looking at it and you can't see it. So all of these type of things that you're going to need um, are all open source now or using free online tools. Now, a lot of my graphics I do do in Adobe Photoshop, but there are loads of free online sort of versions of Photoshop. There's Pixlr, Canva, uh, PicMonkey, I think there's one, uh, Photopia, there's there's loads. So I'm gonna show you the free online tools. So if you are a parent watching this thinking, oh, I want my kids or even yourselves to do this, you don't have to, I'm hoping, she says, about 99% confident that there is nothing that you have to pay for. All the tools, resources, and things that you need, subject to your computer being enough oomph behind it to run some of the applications, there is nothing you need to go and purchase. So it's even free training. Um, so I will also be teaching you the fact that you're gonna be editing and coding inside Visual Studio, which again is a free downloadable tool from Microsoft. And we're gonna cover all of this over the coming uh tutorials basically so um you've you've had a kind of a bit of a nose now as some of the apps in development i've also created a couple of other little slider games uh, and that kind of thing and ironically this is why i actually launched mccall media tv which is my other main youtube channel because i thought when i get this app finished i'm going to want to launch it and no one's going to know about it but my channel's kind of pivoted to do with my business and then my passion was still missing and so i thought you know what my girls are 10 years old or my eldest is 10 years old my nephew is literally 11 in a couple of weeks time i used to do whilst i was at uni the homework club for 11 to 16 year olds and i was teaching them basic HTML then. My eldest daughter is quite techie mad anyway, so she's already in this environment and embracing it all on her own accord. This would be the perfect time to launch a channel whereby I teach my kids what they need to basically learn to program and design their own games. And of course, the brilliant thing about Lua is that most of the games that they like to play, like Roblox, most of it is designed using the Lua programming language. So uh, Angry Birds was released on it. There's been a Sonic game released on using Lua. Um, if I actually went and did some homework somewhere, there is quite a lot of big named brand games that you guys will know of. Um, you can easily go and search like on, on Google and whatnot, but there are lots of games out there that are designed using this programming language. So the fact that most of the Roblox games that my kids um, adopt me is a big, big name one that I hear them talking about. I have no idea what adopt me is, but I know, do know that it is essentially programmed in the Lua programming language. So they will have the experience from the user perspective. They'll have the need and, and so forth. And if it works out and they do, they do, that's great. And if it doesn't, at least I would have helped you guys and I would have released that kind of desire to help show people how to code essentially so that is what my entire channel is all about that's how it came to be i hope you appreciate it and basically over the next 
dozen videos at least i'm going to start showing you how to download the software how to connect it how to look for things the environment and basically starting on a journey to do some very basic app design and coding and everything else that's involved so i hope you like this please do subscribe to my channel uh stay notified and obviously i will see you on another video real soon thanks very much for watching i'm angela mccall and this was point and click oh puzzle games thank you very much